Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. My name is Jacob Scanlon. I'm the lead educator here at the Academy and this is a place for you to learn anything and everything to do with Bitcoin, but also its underlying network of technologies and commodities. And the most important takeaway for this entire video in the context of finance having a serious knowledge gap when it comes to their understanding of Bitcoin is that Bitcoin is not just a digital asset, it's a commodity and it has two exchange rates. That is to say that we can look at Bitcoin in the context of a quantity of dollars, the Bitcoin to dollar exchange rate, but also the original exchange rate, its exchange rate with electricity. And lo and behold, interestingly enough, every blow off top of Bitcoin seems to come crashing down to the network average production cost. And that's, this has happened every single cycle that you look at Bitcoin. And sometimes it even goes below. And what happens there? Well, interestingly enough, Bitcoin mining is not a one way process. It's not just buy energy, produce Bitcoin, but electricity is also its own market. What if you can sell the electricity in greater quantity? These are the sorts of things that we need to delve into in your understanding of Bitcoin, even if you are from the financial sector. So here at the Hash Power Academy, one of the key things to understand is that I do try and teach Bitcoin in a way that touches upon all of these energy, compute and financial technology components, but in a way that makes it a little bit more digestible, so shall we say. Another interesting thing is this, that right now if a miner is spending $50,000 of electricity to produce a $93,000 Bitcoin, you may have heard of the halving. When the halving comes along, the amount of Bitcoin that the miner earns cuts in half, but his electricity bill stays the same. So the Bitcoin halving for miners is actually the doubling. So what if right now fees don't really change much because they're very low and subsidy making up the significant majority, the 99% of rewards will effectively the production floor doubles. And so if production right now were to double, which it's going to do in three years, 2028, well, right, 2028, we know probably with the certainty of an increase in hash rate that the new production floor in 2028 is going to be $100,000 plus. So right now you can be buying Bitcoin at a price that in three years, you know it's going to be higher. Why do you know it's going to be higher? Well, it's not an absolute, but it's the context of what I just mentioned that miners can buy power and produce to sell Bitcoin electricity bid and a Bitcoin ask. But if the price goes below production or we know that this event is coming and you can buy Bitcoin at a lower price today than what your future production cost will be, it's a no brainer to buy it before that trend um, occurs. And actually, interestingly, if you look at the price chart of 2020, Bitcoin had the COVID crash down to three to four thousand dollars which was the production floor at that time. And the new production floor with the halving was about $8,000 because subsidy cut in half. What did price do? Take a look. It jumped up to $8,000 and consolidated and traded sideways. Yes, some hash rate comes offline, which lowers the production floor for the other miners because they now earn a greater quantity of Bitcoin. But if you didn't understand understand the energy and compute economics of Bitcoin and, and the energy sector of how much energy they consume, the amount of hash rate online, which is earning all of that Bitcoin rewards in 144 blocks per day. If you don't have a grasp on those different pieces, I invite you to take a look at the Hash Power Academy and learn all those different other aspects of energy and compute underneath the financial properties of Bitcoin on top of the blockchain. And so another aspect of things that right now is all this volatility and the, uh, should we say, emotion of people trying to trade or accumulate, the best accumulation strategy, even for retail, is dollar cost averaging. You're just collecting that average price, removing the emotion of the volatility by doing drip feeding, such drip feed in incremental purchases instead of trying to figure out one large purchase, entry and exit, or just entry and hodl for life. Now, the other aspect of this is there is market makers and they seem to be capturing a lot of volatility right now, especially in the Michael Saylor playbook as well, which is 
holding Bitcoin spot long and uh, trading and selling Bitcoin short and capturing those premiums in the, in the funding rates. And what this does is create a, an environment of delta neutrality, but the volatility of Bitcoin moving around and those fund rates going up because people are continually buying Bitcoin as well, that volatility is being captured. So we might see less volatility in Bitcoin over time due to the maturity of this asset class. It's already ranked five or six um, in the world ranking of total assets and its potential to go up to um, gold. Well, it can probably uh, just sit underneath gold for quite a while in terms of total asset ranking, in terms of market caps. These are very interesting times where the store of value phase right now, the commodity cycle of Bitcoin could also potentially change that what if uh, price truly takes off and yes, all these financiers talk about this, but production floor grows at the pace that um, mining sites are developed, energy is available, grid capacity is available in power purchase agreements. So there is physical limitations to the increase in the production floor via the difficulty adjustment. This delta of continual change is based on how many blocks are being mined per day, or should we say per two week period. That the difficulty adjustment, which is the Bitcoin code in of itself, the nodes all running this same duplicate version of the same code, near enough, um, they're all constantly observing the rate in which blocks are being mined by the miners. If more mining comes online, there is more energy available in the system chasing fewer Bitcoin. And so the production cost increases because the difficulty adjustment is continually rising as well. But as mentioned, if price truly takes off because of the, shall we say, hyper collateralization of all different asset classes using Bitcoin or buying Bitcoin through fiat Bitcoin bonds, they are not Bitcoin bonds because Bitcoin bonds would be on a Bitcoin unit of account, not a dollarized unit of account to buy Bitcoin. Those are not Bitcoin bonds. And those are just purchases of Bitcoin using Bitcoin as the collateral. And so this hyper collateralization of Bitcoin is going to drive its price up because it's going to be continually used for buying things and that debt based monetary system driving all of that demand. And where is it all going to go? It's going to go with these two comparisons of price and production are going to continuate through time since, well, production floor was the original exchange rate of Bitcoin and price in terms of fiat sits on top as a premium. So I do see that these two are going to continually just have a relationship over time. And the best way to learn about it is to go through all of the maths and physics. And it might be boring, but if you understand it, it will just provide you with so much more information to understand how low Bitcoin can drop relative to the production floor, how high it can fly and that price premium in comparison. If Bitcoin right now is $50,000 to produce, but it shoots up to $500,000, that is a lot of hot air. The, the price can potentially drop over 90% in that example. And every single cycle, we typically see price rise to about four to eight times production. That could change as well. And the profitability of mining could hyper accelerate into a world that we're just constantly trying to find anywhere and everywhere to deploy Bitcoin mining. I personally love the idea of mining in all different places around the world. Not truly feasible in the sense that um, it's, it's high responsibility, high, highly competitive as well. So it's truly about finding a certain niche that suits you and how you want to mine. But yes, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.